So now we're going to be talking about general senses. So general senses, we can classify it into two categories. The first classification, we call it a simple classification, where we have external receptors, proprioceptors, and interoceptors. You guys probably heard about these types of uh, receptors. We talked about them when we um, had our first lecture about the neural tissue. Uh, external receptors just means that it's going to provide information that's going to come from the external environment. So external environment. Proprioceptors, again, it's going to provide information about the position of the body. And interoceptors is going to provide information that's going to be inside of the body. So intro for inside of the body. The other type of classification is according to the type of classification, so the nature of classification. So we can classify it into nociceptors, thermal receptors, mechanoreceptors, and chemoreceptors. So we're going to discuss these types of uh, stimulus, so the nature of the stimulus. The first one that we're going to be talking about is the uh, nociceptors, or are the nociceptors. Basically, we have um, three different types of nociceptors. We have the receptors that are going to be sensitive to extreme temperatures. We have the receptors that are going to be sensitive to mechanical damage. And we have the receptors that are going to be sensitive to chemicals. So as you can see, all these different categories, so extreme temperature, uh, mechanical damage, and chemical um, type of sensation, they're all, they all have to do with pain. So nociceptors are also known as your pain receptors. Basically, the type of receptor is the free nerve ending receptor that we actually saw when we were talking about the receptive field. So it's going to have a large receptive field. So that's why when you go to the doctor and they ask you, oh, where do you feel the pain? You can't really pinpoint where the pain is just because you have a very large receptive field, right? Because the free nerve ending um, goes or has a large range of um, receptive field. We can also divide the nociceptors into the type of pain sensation that we feel. So we have two different pathways. We have what we call a fast pain and a slow pain. So fast pain and slow pain. So like, like the name uh, says, fast pain means that it's going to go really fast. So it's a sensation that you're going to feel really fast. It goes directly to your central nervous system and you can feel the sensation of pain really fast and it's usually going to be associated with what we call a pricking pain or when you have cuts that's what's um, the type of fast pain when we're talking about slow pain it also reaches the central nervous system but it reaches it slowly and this is usually for burns and aching pains Another difference about the slow and fast pain is that with fast pain, the painful sensation is going to go away only after the tissue damage has ended, so after the tissue damage has been recovered. However, with the slow pain, um, the sensation, like I said, takes longer for it to reach the central nervous system the sensation of um, slow pain, it actually begins later and it persists longer than the sensation of fast pain. So it lasts a long time. Okay, so like when you poke your finger on a pin, then that's a fast type of sensation. When you burn your hand, 
that's a slow type of pain because it lasts a very long time. Even after the fire goes out, you can still feel pain in your hand, for example, for a few days. Okay, so that's the, the um, one of the differences between the fast and slow type of pain. So referred pain has to do with um, the typical example of this is when individuals that have, for example, a heart attack, they usually report that they feel pain on their left arm. And this has to do with the nerves that are going to innervate not only your heart, but your arm in this specific case. So the same nerve that will be innervating your heart is the nerve that will be innervating your left arm. So that's why uh, sometimes it's hard for you to pinpoint exactly where the pain is coming from because it, the same nerve is going to be carrying pain information from different locations and therefore it can detect, you can think that it's detecting pain, for example, in your left arm, but it's actually supposed to be detecting pain in your heart. So basically, referred pain has to do with um, same spinal nerves that innervate the viscera and uh, surfaces of your skin. So it's referred to referred pain. And here you can see other examples, for example, your liver and your gall gallbladder is going to be innervated by the same um, nerve that innervates your right shoulder. So sometimes if you have a problem in your liver or your gallbladder, you might be feeling pain on top of your right shoulder. So that's all you need to know. Receptors. Now we're going to be talking about thermal receptors. So the thermal receptors, they're going to be located in specific areas of our body. So the dermis of the skin, the skeletal muscles, the liver, and the hypothalamus. This is a type of what we call a phasic receptor. So we talk about phasic receptor before. So this is why when you are outside, let's say here in Florida, and it's very hot and humid, and you walk into our classroom on some days and it's very, very cold. And as soon as you walk in, you feel the coldness. But after a while, your body sort of adjusts to the temperature and you don't feel as cold. So this is your typical example of a phasic receptor. Now the receptor that's um, going to be receiving this difference in temperature is a free nerve ending. And as we know from the previous slides, the free nerve ending is also the type of receptor that's going to be taking um, pain information, right? So that's why sometimes if you go to extreme temperatures, you can actually feel a lot of pain. Now there's really um, two different types of receptors. We have the cold and the warm receptors. And um, a combination of them will give you every temperature in between. There's really no structural differences between these two receptors. However, you do have three times more cold receptors than you do um, warm receptors. And again, like I said, both of them are going to run through the same pathway as your pain sensations because they do use the same type of receptors. Your mechanoreceptors are the ones that are going to be sensitive to any type of distortion that occurs on your, uh, usually on your skin, but it can also occur in um, certain type of organs and also on joints and muscles. And basically, there are uh, examples of these um, 
distortions are things like when you're stretching your skin or you're stretching your muscle, you're compressing also your skin. You can be twisting certain types of um, um, body parts and anything that will distort the membrane of a cell or of your receptor is going to cause this type of sensation. We can classify it into three different types. We have what we call the tactile receptors, the barrel receptors, and the proprioceptors. We've been talking a lot about proprioceptors, so proprioceptors you guys should know by now. So it's going to monitor the position of joints and muscles, and therefore it's going to give us our position. And this is basically the most complex of the general sensory receptors and remember that it combines the tonic and, and the phasic receptors, right? So it combines both of them. So that's why it's a little bit complicated. Now the tactile receptors and the barrel receptors, we're going to be talking a little bit more. But basically the tactile receptors, they're going to provide sensation of touch, pressure, and vibration. And your barrel receptors are going to be very important because basically they're going to detect the differences in temp and pressure and that's going to be important because it's going to work together with your blood vessels to either increase the influx or decrease the influx to sort of control your blood pressure and it's also going to work together with your digestive system, system reproductive and urinary. Okay, so bare receptors are very, very important and we're going to see them on the next few slides. So first, let's talk about your tactile receptors. Basically, they're going to be located on the skin. And you can see how we have um, three, six, eight different types of tactile receptors. The ones that we've talked a little bit about are the free nerve endings, which have to do not only with your pain, so nociceptors, but also with your thermal, so controlling temperature but it also controls touch, okay? Uh, we did talk a little bit about Merkel cells when we were talking about the epidermis, and we talked about the pacinian type of receptor when we were talking about pressure. But um, another one that maybe we should talk a little bit about is the Ruffini corpuscle, and basically these are going to be located in muscle fibers and you can see them right over here okay so any distortion of these nerves will give you the sensation of um, tactile so here we have our barrel receptors like I said your barrel receptors they're gonna be uh, stretch receptors that are going to monitor the changes in the stretch of organs and um, they're going to be located in your stomach. They're also going to be located in your small intestine. It's going to be located in your urinary bladder. It's going to be located in your carotid artery up here. It's going to be located in your lungs. And it's also going to be located in your large intestine. And um, like I said, and you can read over here what it's going to do. But basically, it's going to control a lot of our vital functions. And you guys can go over this table over here and make sure that you know um, the more um, or all the functions that occur in these specific barrel receptors. When we're talking about the sinuses that are going to be present here in the aorta and on your carotid artery, Basically, it's going to be an enlargement that we see, and we'll be able to see this when we talk about the cardiovascular system. So there's going to be an enlargement of these areas, and that's why we call it the carotid sinus and the aortic sinus. The last type of um, general senses is what we call the chemoreceptors. The chemoreceptors... They're going to detect um, 
small changes in the concentration of certain chemicals that are present in our body, they are going to be responsible to responding to water-soluble and lipid-soluble substances, and they're going to be found in uh, respiratory centers of the medulla oblongata, the carotid arteries, and the aortic arch. And if we move on to the next slide, we're going to see these um, centers. So you can see right over here your medulla oblongata, your carotid bodies, and your aortic bodies. So car carotid bodies and aortic bodies are going to be exactly where we have the sinuses. So that's why it's important for these receptors because they, when we're talking about carotid bodies and aortic bodies, both of them are going to measure uh, pH changes, uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and partial pressure of oxygen. So you can see how both of them are going to measure all three. And both of them are going to be important because they're going to via your cranial nerve number 9 and your cranial nerve number 10, they're going to trigger not only adjustments in your respiratory system, but also adjustments in your cardiovascular activity. Now, the medulla oblongata is a little bit different because it only checks um, your pH and your partial pressure of carbon dioxide. It does not check the partial pressure of oxygen. And in this case, it only adjusts the depth and the rate of respiration. So it has nothing to do with your cardiovascular activity. So basically that's um, all we need to know about the general senses and next week we'll be talking about the special senses.